All right, guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week, we're going to install the electronics and fit some wheels to the sand scorcher. So here we are at step 16, the steering servo. We've got a core RC servo, but it doesn't really matter too much what you're going to use. We don't need an especially high torque servo or a fast one. We'd get away with a plastic gear servo too, with the stock servo saver protecting things. However, I'd really recommend a metal gear servo, but other than that, any standard size servo is going to do the job. From the servo accessory bag, we need the four armed arm and the small screw to attach it. Now, before we attach the arm, we need to power up the servo to make sure it's in the center. You can follow the manual and hook up all the electronics, but a much quicker way is to use a servo tester. This one's my own design, but some chargers have a servo output, or you can get a cheap and cheerful tester from your favourite online RC retailer. Either way, it makes setting up during the build far, far quicker. Next, we try the servo arm in a few orientations to get the arm as square as possible. We want the arm to be pointing upwards as we see it here. Then, when we've got the right arm, we can clip the others off with some cutters. We can then press the arm on and install the screw. If you've got a metal gear servo, a tiny bit of thread lock isn't a bad idea too. There shouldn't be a problem, but it's nice to give the servo a quick sweep back and forth just to make sure it's doing what it should. If nothing else, we'll know if there's a problem later, it's not going to be the servo. There's also a 4mm ball end and a nut to fit to the arm, but I missed it in this step, so we'll catch up with that in a minute. Okay, step 17, the steering linkage. We need a 3x3 grub screw, the steering rod sleeve, the cable bushing, the rod stopper, two 4mm rod ends, the steering rod itself, and when we get to it, we need the bottom of the electronics box. On the short end of the rod, we need to thread on a rod end. Now there's a few dimensions on the diagram, but it's not really all that helpful. For now, we'll just thread it on so the threads are most of the way into the rod end, and we'll adjust it a bit later. On the long end of the rod, we have the stopper and sleeve. The stopper needs the grub fitting into its threaded hole. It wants some thread lock too at some point, but for now we don't know exactly where it wants to go, so we'll lock it up a bit later. For now, we'll just slide it up the rod with the sleeve over the end. Now on the end of the rod, we thread on another rod end. Just like the other one, we're going to thread it in so it's most of the way on, and then adjust it later. Now this is when I noticed that we need a ball end on the servo arm. So I went back a page and checked that I did indeed miss it. So with one of the brass ball ends and an M2 nut at the ready, I drilled the outermost hole in the arm to 2mm, popped the ball in from the outside and threaded on the nut. Added a bit of thread lock and it's ready to go. Now in this step, Tamiya wants us to stick the servo down with servo tape. A perfectly good method, except the position is fairly critical to getting the steering to run smoothly. Moving it front and back is going to change the steering position, and side to side it might cause the rod to rub the plastic box. So for now we're going to mix things up a bit and skip around the next two steps. Right, step 19, fitting the box to the chassis. We need a M3 by 18 countersunk screw, a rosette washer, one of those washers where one side fits a countersunk screw, four M2 by 6s and a well nut, one of those rubber ones with a nut embedded. For plastic, we need the box and the front section. We're also supposed to fit the lid, but we still have a bit of work to do on that before we get to it on step 18. Before we start adding the other bits, I think we're going to install the cable bushing on the motor wires. Technically, this was in step 17, but I think it's easier to manage before we install the steering servo. First, the motor wires go through the square hole in the bottom of the box. Then, we stretch the rubber bushing over the connector and down the wires. I found some small pliers did the trick stuff them in and open them so there's enough space to pass the connector through. It's all a bit tight, but that'll help them seal, which is the general idea. Next, the bushing pops into the square hole, which is easier said than done. There's a flange on each side of the bushing. You need to very carefully offer up the bushing and work it so one of the flanges pops through the hole. 
It's just about doable by hand. Using tools can be tempting though, just be careful not to damage it. I found once it was started, the end of a mechanical pencil was just enough to pick up and jiggle the flange and work it through. Next we fit the standard receiver box on the front of the big box. It simply offers up to the front and we install the four M2 screws. Don't forget their machine screws going into plastic, so watch out for over tightening. They just need to be snug, then a little bit extra. Next we can mount the box. Up front we need to install the countersunk screw with the rosette washer into the well nut. We just need to take up the slack with the screw. If we tighten it, the well nut will expand and we won't be able to fit the box. Same goes for the well nut we installed near the back in a previous video. Then, if the nuts are relaxed, we can drop the box down onto the top of them. It'll need a bit of working side to side to make sure it's all the way down. Then we nip up the screws that go into the well nuts. Do them up a little bit at a time, going back and forth. Now, they don't need to be done up super tight, just keep going until they get nice and stiff. Flip the chassis over and you should find the box is well attached, but you can still rock it ever so slightly left and right. A bit of a strange setup, but it's going to work. Next we can install the steering linkage. There's always going to be a fair amount of adjustment with this. We need to clip the front cup onto the servo saver ball and have it adjusted so the linkage goes straight through the hole in the box. It's a fiddle, just take your time and get it spot on now, rather than wait for more things to be in the way. To install the servo, we're going to use servo tape. Now Tamiya do give you a strip, which I'm sure will work just fine, but I prefer this tape from Fast Tracks. It sticks a bit better, and if you want to remove it, it doesn't fall apart, leaving a nice clean surface. Now before we start sticking, we need to make sure everything's perfectly clean by wiping it down with some alcohol. If you want the servo to stay put, we need to remove all the grease and oil. The steering servo is going to get pushed and pulled around quite a bit, so it's very critical everything is perfectly clean. Once it's all dry, we just need to cut a square of tape and stick it down to what's going to be the bottom of the servo. Try not to touch anything once it's clean, we want to give it the best chance of sticking. Right, now we can peel the backing off and position the servo. We're going to clip the cup onto the servo's ball and find the sweet spot so the rod's going right through the middle of the hole in the box and the steering is nice and straight. When it's spot on, press the servo down to make it permanent. We do something similar with the ESC, except we mount it right at the back of the platform. It's not quite so critical to having it perfectly clean, but it of course doesn't hurt. There's also the receiver, but I'm not too sure where that's going to go just yet. The typical 6L NIMI or similar size LiPo isn't going to fit in the box, so we need to come up with a battery setup that works. I'm thinking a 2-cell 2200mAh power pack in a custom tray across the box is going to work nicely, but we're going to come to that in a future video. Back to step 18, the locks for the lid. We need two M2x10s, two 2mm washers, four springs and the four locking posts. The first thing to do is prep the locking pins. They have a hex head like a screw at one end and a pin at the other. We need to essentially thread on the springs over the pins. One per pin, of course. Quite simple, just watch your fingers on the ends of the springs as they can be a bit sharp. To fit the pins to the lid, we just pop them into the holes and line up the pins with the slots in the bottom of the holes, push them down and twist. That just leaves a switch that needs to be mounted in the hump at the back of the lid. If you're not using a Tamiya ESC, you might need to be a bit clever and come up with your own mount. But the included Tamiya ESC is of course a direct fit. We just need to remove the two screws from the switch and lift off the cover plate. Offer the switch up inside the lid so it pokes through the hole. Pop the cover plate back on and install the two M2 screws with the washers. Nip them up and we can fit the lid to the box. Which means we're back on step 19. So the lid just drops into place and we use an allen key to twist the lock so the pins go down through the slot in the box. Then we twist them 90 degrees and let them go. Quite a nice setup but it is a bit of a pain to remove if you forget the allen key. And you have to remove the lid to disconnect the battery so something a bit more convenient would be better. Back to the switch and we need to fit the rubber boot. 
it simply presses down over the top work it around and it's going to gradually sit all the way down sealing the switch completely which is very nice there's the steering rod to finish up now we just need to tuck the end of the sleeve into the hole in the box it's a bit of a fiddle to get in but it will go in front of it we have the rod stopper we'll add a little bit of thread up to the grub screw and set it so the sleeve is fairly well compressed but so we can still steer left and right without any binding i'm going to have an educated guess but it wouldn't be a bad idea to power up the servo and check the clearances anyway All right step 20 the wheels we've got some absolute classic tamiya bead locks here the same as the ones we put together for the frog where i swore i'd never put another set together but here we are all right we need 10 m2 by 10s 10 m2 by 8s and 20 m2 nuts and there's a full set of plastic wheel parts f1 2 and 3 for the front and r1 2 and 3 for the rear the build of these wheels isn't too bad generally the only issue is getting the center parts of the wheels into the tires they are extremely tight i've tried warming them up which does help a bit but in the end I found you just need to persevere and very carefully lever them on. I think after 10 minutes of trying to pull the tyres on the rubber has a little bit more give in it and they go on. But struth my hands were sore after doing them. With the centre bits in the rest is easy. We just offer up the two sides and insert the screws from the outside into the nuts that sit in the hex shaped holes on the inside. Five per wheel. Once all the screws are in, we can go around the inside and add a tiny amount of thread lock to the exposed threads. Then we loosen and re-tighten all the screws. Doing it this way avoids getting the thread lock on the plastic, but still gets just enough in the threads it's going to stop the screws from falling out. The rears are exactly the same, except they're sided. There's a diagram in the manual that shows the tyre tread, but really make sure that you get a left and a right. You really don't want to have to take them apart again. With all four done, we can fit them to the chassis. Step 21, fitting the wheels to the chassis. We're gonna need four M4 flange wheel nuts, two pins, four 1150 bearings, two wheel hubs, and the sprung antenna. For the rear wheels, we need to pull the body clips that's been keeping the bearing safe. Slide in one of the pins and we offer up a hub. Pop a wheel on so the bumps on the inside interlock with the hubs and fit one of the nuts. At the front we pop a bearing in either side of the wheel, slide it over the spindle and install a nut. Do both sides and that's the sand scorcher on its wheels. At the back we just need to thread on the springy bit of the antenna over its mount and well that's step 21 complete. What we have is a rolling chassis with most of the electronics installed. It really is a brilliant looking setup, with all the metal parts on show, everything feels silky smooth, which is going to last until the oil leaks and the dampers, but that's another problem. It really is one of those models that makes you think that they really don't make them quite like they used to. Right, for this week then, that's going to be it. Next time we'll do a quick build of the body, just enough to get a feel for it, so we can stare at it and decide what to do with the paint. Right, as always then, thanks for watching like if you like, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys!